This is an addendum to the caffeine video where I'm going to revisit and show in more detail why Hebrews 11.1 1 is mistranslated in all Bibles. But before doing that, I'm going to ask you to do something so that what I say will make a little bit more sense. As you can see, you got Google here on screen and the search text is there. Subjective and Objective Genitive Bible Greek. I would ask you to do a Google search. I would ask you to read some of the links that you find. Pick the ones you want. Um, I belong to Be Greek here but I can't post there because I won't use my real name. But you're going to find a lot of posts there on this topic. They're by scholars, current scholars, okay, who are teaching Bible Greek at university, etc. Whether they believe in Christ or not, I really don't know because it's not often talked about. I'm sure some of them do, but you don't have to believe in Christ to be a Bible scholar, okay? So, I would really ask you to review that because it's going to be key to understanding Hebrews 11.1. 1. The other thing I would ask you to do is to carefully consider um, carefully consider the importance of getting a Bible verse right in translation. One of the problems that we keep on having in society in general is that people just go along with what the majority opinion is and that's frequently a criticism by atheists of Christians is that we're just going along to get along but the atheists themselves actually base most of what they say on uh, hearsay, consensus hearsay. And I, you know, this is a dangerous thing for anybody to do. Okay? Um, what you need to do whenever you've got a topic that you have to figure out where you're going to position yourself, you really need to look at the source information. You don't just take what some alleged expert says is true. Okay, if you're in a hurry or temporarily, yeah, you can do that. But when you're talking about questions as important as the Bible, you got to actually look at the Bible, not at what dear Dr. So-and-so says about the Bible. In other words, my pastor taught from the Bible, you know, for four or five decades. But you know what he did? He showed us how to read it in the Hebrew and Greek. That's how I learned the Hebrew and Greek. And I don't take his word for what he said. I look at it in the text. Now, maybe a lot of people aren't comfortable doing that. Okay? But, honey, your life is before God if you're a Christian. And it isn't based on whether your doctor so-and-so said that the Bible meant this or meant that. It's based on your life before God. Did you check what the pastor said? If what the pastor said was right and you didn't check it, then you're disrespecting the pastor. If what your pastor said was wrong and you didn't check it, then you're liable for God to God for not checking it. Now, atheists don't believe in God. Okay, fine. But atheists... You believe there's no God. You also claim to believe in something called the scientific method. The scientific method demands that you check the source. You don't just take things on hearsay. You cannot rely on consensus. You know, a hundred years ago, the consensus was that if you had a disease, you had to be bled. William Vanderbilt, in particular, was one of the guys who was bled, and a doggone near killed him. 
okay? You don't go by consensus. If you have source text to compare, you go to the source text. And if that source text is not is in a translation, the first thing you should do is suspect the translation. Okay? So my channel de is devoted to auditing for that reason. You want to be an atheist? Fine, I'm happy for you. I'm not criticizing your belief. What I criticize is lack of homework. And there's two kinds of lack of homework going on here. In this particular case, this is an offshoot of my argument to Caffeine, who claimed to be a professional translator, that he didn't do his job. That instead he relied on a faulty translation of Hebrews 11.1 1, to make his posts. Because he was using it, he was having faith in the King James translation of Hebrews 11.1 1, to make his point. And he screwed it up because he did that. By the same token, on the Christian side, because I don't want it to look like I'm just, you know, reaming out caffeine. He's a poster boy for a whole problem that everybody has on both sides of the aisle. On the Christian side, don't just look at your translation and assume it's right. And in this particular case, Hebrews 11.1 1 makes a special use of the subjective and objective genitive. And because the scholars were in a hurry and didn't pay attention when they translated it, they screwed up the translation so bad that the entire point of the chapter is missed. Okay? That's why I've got to make another video on Hebrews 11, 1 in the Greek and show you about this. And that's why you have to look this up and understand it before you see the next video on this. So now we're sort of moving off the criticism of caffeine and moving on to the general criticism of the fact that Hebrews 11, 1 is mistranslated in every Bible that you can pick up. That's criminal. If we're Christians and we claim to love God, then we ought to get our translations right, and when they're not right, we ought to admit it, instead of repeating the error generation after generation. That's exactly what happened with the King James. Is that people were, oh, it's the King James. I'm afraid to depart from it. And the translation committee, which is a big load of politics, the translation committee didn't want the translation to be too different from what's been translated before. And so the Bible is a casualty of this. God's word is being compromised in the name of tradition, in the name of go along to get along, in the name of what some alleged expert said you know, was the translation in the past. That's unforgivable. No wonder the atheists accuse us of, of being irrational. And it's certainly irrational not to recheck the translation, as you'll see when I do the next video. Now, there's one final thing that I need to cover here, okay? When you read this stuff, don't just read one source. Read multiple sources. Because some of them are right, some of them are wrong, some of them are more detailed than others, and um, some of them are just like, you know, mouthing the party line, okay? So you've got to look at all the sources. Or, you know, just pick the ones that, that you know, like this is edu, that means that it's, it's at a university, okay? So you want to sort of pick those things. All right, that's all for right now. Again, we're going to look at the source text. Whenever you got something going on, you look at the source. You don't just take somebody else's word for it. That's why I make so many boring videos. I want to show you the source so you don't have to take Brainout's word for it. You can see it for yourself. Peace out. Next video will be on Hebrews 11. One.